His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in Amman on a visit to hold discussions with His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Hussein of Jordan regarding the brotherly relations linking the two countries and people, as well as discussing recent regional developments upon arrival. His Majesty was received by His Majesty the King of Jordan and senior officials. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a meeting with the Jordanian monarch, His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Hussein of Jordan. His Majesty congratulated the Jordanian monarch on uh, the occasion of the 25th anniversary of his assumption or assuming his constitutional powers and praised the development of achievements and stability witnessed by Jordan under the leadership of His Majesty King Abdullah II and hailed the unity and loyalty of the Jordanian people. Their Majesties discussed ways to further enhance the bilateral cooperation and economic integration and discussed regional and international issues. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Abdullah the second for the warm reception and generous hospitality and praise the vital role of Jordan in spreading peace and defending Arab and Islamic issues, especially the Palestinian cause. His Majesty King Abdullah II praised the efforts of uh, Bahrain in organizing the upcoming Arab summit and both leaders expressed confidence in the success of the summit and affirmed the importance of holding Arab uh, summits regularly. Their Majesties discussed the political and security situation in the Middle East and affirmed the need for the international community and especially the Security Council to implement decisions regarding reaching an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. Both leaders stress the need to protect uh, civilians, ensuring the safe delivery of humanitarian aid and de-escalating the situation and express rejection of expanding the war and attacks on Rafah or the displacement of Palestinians. Both sides affirm the importance of respecting the legal and historical status of Al-Quds and putting a stop to Israeli attacks on religious sites. They also condemn building Israeli occupations in uh, Palestine for it being a violation for international law. Their Majesties called on coordination Arab and international efforts to achieve a just and comprehensive peace in the region and supporting the Palestinian people in establishing their independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital in accordance with a two-state solution. His Majesty the King affirmed the importance of the Hashmid custodianship over the Islamic and Christian holy sites in Jerusalem. His Majesty praised the continuous uh, diplomatic efforts of Jordan led by His Majesty Abdullah II in, uh, or in supporting uh, the Palestinian cause and facilitating the delivery of aid to Gaza in addition to the humanitarian programs it holds to support the Palestinian people. His Majesty also praised the cooperation or the cooperative efforts of Jordan with the Royal Humanitarian Foundation in providing aid to Palestinians and Syrian refugees. Both sides affirm the need to reduce tension in the Middle East and avoid military escalation as well as the necessity of Arab and international cooperation in reaching comprehensive, peaceful and just solutions for the conflicts in the region and coordinating efforts in combating terrorism and its financing. Their Majesty affirmed their commitment for continuous coordination and consultation for the benefit of both countries and their people, enhancing brotherly cooperation, supporting joint Arab action and facing foreign interferences and security threats. They also affirm the importance of Arab and international partnerships in enhancing security, peace, coexistence and regional cooperation to sustainable development and guaranteeing the safety of all. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa attended a lunch banquet held by His Majesty King Abdullah II bin Hussein of Jordan in honor of His Majesty the King. The banquet was attended by senior officials and His Majesty the King's accompanying delegation. His Majesty the King then departed Jordan and at the forefront to bid His Majesty farewell was the Jordanian monarch and a number of senior officials. His Majesty the King sent a cable of thanks to His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Hussein of Jordan, in which he expressed thanks and appreciation for the warm welcome and generous hospitality, which reflects the bilateral historic brotherly ties. His Majesty praised the outcomes of the meeting that aimed to enhance the bilateral coordination and discussing the upcoming Arab summit in its 33rd edition that will be hosted by Bahrain, as well as discussing regional developments and supporting Arab and international efforts exerted to enhance peace, security, and stability in the region, in addition to avoiding escalation and 
supporting efforts aiming at reaching a ceasefire in Gaza and defending the legitimate rights of Palestinians in order to establish their independent state. Ismashi also praised the efforts of the Jordanian monarch in enhancing peace in the region and his efforts in facilitating humanitarian aid to Palestine, as well as his firm stance in defending Arab and Islamic issues and enhancing joint Arab action. Ismashi wished the Jordanian monarch more good health and happiness and wished Jordan further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa arrived in Cairo on a visit to Egypt during which His Majesty will uh, hold uh, talks with the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah Sisi, on the deep rooted brotherly relations between the two countries and regional developments. At uh, the forefront to receive His Majesty the King was the Egyptian President, a number of senior officials, Bahrain's ambassador to Egypt, Bozi ibn Abdel Zainal, and members of the Kingdom's embassy. At the palace, that official reception ceremony was held for His Majesty the King and 21 shots were fired in salute to His Majesty the King. The royal Bahraini and the Egyptian Republic and anthems were played.
After that, His Majesty the King greeted senior recipients from the Egyptian side and the Egyptian president greeted the delegation accompanying His Majesty. The delegation of honor was formed under the chairmanship of the Minister of Housing, Utilities and Urban Communities of Egypt, Dr. Asim al jazar His Majesty the King held an official discussion session with the President of Egypt at the Republican Palace in Cairo where His Majesty expressed appreciation for the warm welcome and generous hospitality. He congratulated the President on the occasion of assuming a new presidential term, wishing him success in leading Egypt towards further prosperity and peace, expressing Bahrain's pride in its historical fraternal relations with Egypt based on mutual respect and unity of purpose and destiny. The Egyptian President welcomed His Majesty the King and the accompanying delegation, stressing the importance of the visit and strengthening bilateral relations. The two sides praised the advanced level of cooperation between the two countries, expressing their joint commitment to achieving further political, economic and security cooperation and stressed the importance of continuing dialogue, consultations and coordination to confront regional challenges for the interests of the people of the region. The two sides also expressed their best wishes to the leaders of Arab countries that the Arab summit will be successful, which will be hosted by Bahrain on May 16th, hoping that it will yield fruitful results that enhance Arab solidarity peace, security, and stability in the region. His Majesty the King praised Egypt's historical role in advancing its people and preserving their security under the leadership of President Sisi, stressing Egypt's important position as a decisive strategic asset for the security of the Arabian Gulf and its constructive initiatives in leading peace efforts in the Middle East. In turn, the Egyptian President praised Bahrain's steadfast support for Egypt's security and progress under the directives of His Majesty the King. He expressed confidence in the success of Bahrain's leadership in managing the upcoming Arab summit, the two sides stressed the importance of maintaining unity and common visions on regional and international issues in a manner that serves Arab national security and peace. They stressed uh, the need to find diplomatic solutions for disputes and conflicts and the urgent need to address the tragic situation in Gaza, ensuring safe access to humanitarian aid and rejecting any plans for further violence or displacement. They affirmed uh, their commitment to supporting Arab peace and security and working together to achieve peace and stability in the region. They also called on the United Nations Security Council to act decisively in addressing regional conflicts, including implementing ceasefire resolutions in Gaza and delivering humanitarian aid. They stressed the need for a political path towards a just and lasting peace in the region based on the two-state solution and the acceptance of Palestine as a full member of the United Nations. The two sides also called for preventing escalation in the Middle East and stressed the importance of creating a positive climate for security, stability and prosperity for all in the region. They stressed the need for cooperation to protect international navigation in the Arab Gulf and the Red Sea and to support the rights of Egypt and Sudan in the waters of uh, the Nile River. The two sides reiterated the commitment to strengthen bilateral cooperation, intensify diplomatic efforts, work to find peaceful solutions to conflicts, continue efforts to combat terrorism, reject extremism and enhance the solidarity of Arab countries with the aim of achieving stability, development and prosperity for all in the region. The His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, held a press conference following the official discussion session in which they discussed its outcomes. At the beginning of the press conference, the Egyptian President welcomed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to Egypt on the visit that comes within the framework of the fraternal and distinguished relations that bind the two countries and people. He stated that the meeting today comes at a very critical time as a result of the Israeli war on the Gaza Strip and the continuous loss of innocent civilian lives. He stated that it is a defining moment that witnesses the continuous use of military force to terrorize and starve civilians and to punish them collectively to force them into displacement with the international community watching helplessly and the absence of any international capacity or 
or will to achieve justice or enforce the international law, the international humanitarian law, or the simplest concepts of humanity. President Assisi stated that he discussed with His Majesty the King the efforts of the two countries and the joint Arab efforts to address the situation and put an end to it, and most importantly, to prevent its reoccurrence by working to unify the international will to implement an immediate and sustainable ceasefire in the Gaza Strip and to stop all attempts at forcing displacement or starvation and collective punishment of the Palestinian people and ensuring the full sustainable and adequate access to humanitarian aid to the Strip with serious and immediate engagement in the path to reach a just and sustainable political solution to the Palestinian cause on the basis of the two-state solution and the implementation of a Palestinian state on the borders of uh, June 4, 1967 with East Jerusalem as its capital and its international recognition and full membership in the United Nations. The Egyptian president added that Egypt has warned of uh, the direct political security and humanitarian consequences of the war on the people of Palestine and that it will lead to the expansion of the conflict and calls for escalation and revenge and the introduction of the region into a cycle of violence and counter-violence. He stated that over the past few months, the region has witnessed severe consequences of the continuation of the war, which places the security, stability and future of the people under a serious threat. President Sisi added that he discussed with his Majesty the King these troubling regional developments and the scenarios for dealing with them within the framework of the agreement on the necessity of maintaining the security and stability of the region as people against various threats within the framework of the priority of common Arab security. He added that they have agreed on the need to immediately intensify and encourage efforts to stop the escalation, whether in the Palestinian territories or at the regional level, and to work to push uh, the parties to adopt a rationality and diplomatic solutions, abandon military solutions and perceptions of dominance, influence, and, hege and uh, hegemony, and allow efforts aimed at peace to succeed and provide an alternative path for the people and countries of the region. He renewed his welcome to His Majesty the King, looking forward to further their close cooperation between the two countries in a manner that achieves the interests of the two brotherly people and the Arab nation, wishing His Majesty in Bahrain further prosperity. فتتسع دائرته لتلتهم دون رحمة أي أمل لشعوب المنطقة في سلام وحياة مستقرة آمنة وقد شهدت المنطقة على مدار الأشهر القليلة الأخيرة تبعات بالغة, بالغة لاستمرار هذه الحرب حيث تمتد نيرانها إلى مختلف أنحاء المنطقة فأصبحنا أمام نشهده اليوم من وضع إقليمي بالغ التوتر والخطورة يضع أمن واستقرار ومستقبل شعوبنا موضع تهديد حقيقي وجاد لقد نقشت مع شقيق جلالة الملك البحرين تفصيلا هذه التطورات الإقليمية المقلقة وتصورات التعامل معها في إطار اتفاقنا معا على ضرورة الحفاظ على أمن واستقرار المنطقة وشعبها ضد مختلف المهددات وعدم ترك مسائرها لإرادة دعاة الحروب في إطار أولوية الأمن العربي المشترك الذي نعتبره كل لا يتجزأ وقد اتفقنا على ضرورة التكسيف والتشجيع الفوري لجهود إيقاف التصعيد سواء في الأراضي الفلسطينية أو على المستوى الإقليمي والعمل على دفع الأطراف إلى انتاج العقلانية والحلول الدبلوماسية والتخلي عن الحلول العسكرية وتصورات الغلبة والنفوذ والهيمنة والسماح للجهود المخلصة الهادفة للسلام بالنجاح فتح مسار بديل لشعوب ودول المنطقة يحمل أملا بمستقبل توحد فيه شعوب ودول المنطقة جهودها من أجل الرخاء والتنمية أخي صاحب الجلالة مرة أخرى أجد ترحيبي بكم وأتطلع إلى المزيد من التعاون الوثيق بين بلدينا بما يحقق مصالح شعبينا الشقيقين وأمتنا العربية متمنيا لكم ولمملكة البحرين الشقيقة كل الخير والازدهار شكرا لكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فخامة الأخ العزيز الرئيس عبد الفتاح السيسي رئيس جمهورية مصر العربية الشقيقة الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته 
أنه لمن دواعي المحبة والتقدير أن نقوم بهذه الزيارة لجمهورية مصر العربية الشقيقة التي تشعرنا على الدوام وبما نشهده من حفاوة وترحاب بأننا بين أهلنا وعزوتنا فمصر العروبة الحاضرة في الذاكرة والوجدان بأنها مهد الأمن والأمان وموطن الخير والاستقرار والتي تفردت بالذكر الصريح في محكم التنزيل ستظل وكما عرفناها خير السند ونعم العون للجميع ويطيب لنا بهذه المناسبة أن نعرب عن ارتياحنا الكبير بما تناولت جلسة المباحثات المشتركة التي جمعتنا بأخي الكريم وقامة الرئيس حيث تمت مناقشة عدد من القضايا ذات الأولوية والأهمية لتعزيز العمل العربي المشترك وخصوصاً ما تعلق بضرورة تنفيذ قرارات وقف إطلاق النار في غزة وتوصيل المساعدات الإنسانية والحاجة إلى مسار سياسي نحو سلام عادل ودائم في المنطقة على أساس حل الدولتين وقبول فلسطين كعضو كامل العضوية في الأمم المتحدة لينال الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق حقوقه المشروعة كما تم بحث جدول أعمال القمة العربية الثالثة والثلاثين التي سوف تستضيفها مملكة البحرين في شهر مايو المقبل وضرورة التوصل وبصورة عاجلة إلى سياسة واضحة لوقف التصعيد بمنطقة الشرق الأوسط وضمان السلام والأمن والاستقرار الإقليمي وأننا على ثقة تامة بأن نتائج مباحثاتنا المثمرة بما تميزت به من عزم صادق لدعم الجهود الجماعية لتحقيق السلام العادل والشامل في المنطقة ستجد طريقها بإذن الله تعالى نحو التنفيذ الذي آن أوانا كي تنال أجيالنا القادمة حقها من العيش الكريم والحياة الآمنة ولا يسعنا هنا إلا أن نجدد دعم مملكة البحرين لجهود مصر الشقيقة ومواقفها الثابتة ودورها التاريخي المستمر من أجل نشر السلام ودعم الاستقرار الإقليمي والعالمي وهو أمر ليس بغريب ولا بمستغرب على مصر العزيزة التي سجل تاريخها القديم أول معاهدة سلام مكتوبة عرفها العالم بين القائد رمسيس الثاني والمملكة الحثية في العام 1258 قبل الميلاد وتضمنت بنودا قانونية وعسكرية لسلام دائم بين المملكتين ومسجل اليوم في هيئة الأمم وفي الختام نكرر شكرنا وتقديرنا لكرم الضيافة وطيب الوفادة واعتزازنا بفرصة هذا اللقاء الأخوي المهم بنتائجها الطيبة التي سيكون لها أعظم الأثر على مسيرة العمل العربي وعلاقاتنا الأخوية الوطيدة وتنمية مصالحنا المشتركة لخير ورفعة شعبينا الشقيقين وأنها لمسيرة مباركة نحرص على رعايتها ودعمها يدا بيد مع القيادة المصرية الشقيقة وحكومتها الرشيدة وشعبها الشقيق وكافة مؤسساتها العريقة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
In honor of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi held a dinner banquet on the occasion of His Majesty the King's visit to Egypt. The banquet was attended by members of the official delegation accompanying His Majesty the King and a number of senior officials in the Egyptian government. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi are keen to strengthen the bilateral relations in all fields based on the historic ties between the two countries. More in this report. The history of two ancient civilizations are deep-rooted in history, and the history of two brotherly countries and peoples have established many positions over time, and each country was keen to support the security and interest of the other country based on the reality of relations and the common destiny of the Arab world. The Bahraini-Egyptian relations are characterized by their strength and solidity and have been strengthened and grown under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, based on the pivotal role of the two brotherly countries in the region. Bahraini-Egyptian relations move to broader horizons to prove the strength of these relations. Through communication and integration, Egypt gained the distinguished position with His Majesty the King, the Kingdom of Bahrain, the government and the people, as Bahrain preserves the strength of these relations in various fields, and His Majesty the King expressed pride in these relations in multiple speeches, meetings and forums. Politically, militarily, economically and socially, the two countries always stand with each other with firm stances. The close historical relations that bring together the Kingdom of Bahrain and Egypt are based on awareness and common understanding of the nature of the regional and international changes that the region has witnessed and is still witnessing, and the importance of dealing with them with consistent and integrated policies and positions. The Bahraini-Egyptian visions and aspirations converged in many fields and positions, making these positions historically rooted and being a living example of a relationship between two brotherly leaderships and peoples. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa directed the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture and the Ministry of Works to assess the flood-related damages to compensate those affected. His Royal Highness further directed for the identification of areas adversely affected by the rainfall and develop sustainable infrastructure and drainage solutions needed in line with the best practices to meet current and future needs. He commended the efforts of the ministries and concerned authorities that have been responding to the flooding. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 23 of the year 2024, appointing a director in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs based on a proposal by the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Article 1, Dr. Ali bin Ziyab bin Sagran Naimi shall be appointed Director of the Planning and Projects Directorate at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Limsalam, affirmed that the royal vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in supporting joint Arab action constitutes a roadmap for cooperation, security, peace, development, and the future of the region and generations. He praised the results of the official visits, the meeting, and the discussion session held by His Majesty the King with the Jordanian monarch, King Abdullah II ibn Hussein, and uh, the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi. He noted that the approach affirms His Majesty's keenness to support bilateral cooperation and enhance joint Arab action. Based on close historical relations, he stressed the full parliamentary support for achieving further economic cooperation and integration, coordinating positions on current regional and international issues, and supporting Arab and Islamic issues, especially the Palestinian cause. al Masalam added that his Majesty's diplomatic policy and the coordination and consultation with leaders of the Arab countries lay the foundations for the success of the next Arab summit, which will be hosted by Bahrain. The Speaker of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, has praised the outcomes of the meeting held by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa with the Jordanian monarch King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein and the official discussions held by His Majesty the King and uh, the President of Egypt, Abdel Fattah al Sisi, praising the efforts led by His Majesty the King to spread peace and promote Arab and regional security and stability. He expressed pride in His Majesty the King's approach and royal visions, which affirm Bahrain's support under the leadership of His Majesty for all that contributes to the stability of the political and security situation in the Middle least. Hassan affirmed that the bilateral meetings and joint discussions held by His Majesty the King, the Jordanian monarch and the Egyptian president re reflect uh, the close relations and ties between Bahrain, Jordan and Egypt. Saleh noted that the legislative authorities is keen to consolidate the role of Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy in building strong relations with the parliaments of brotherly and friendly countries. 
In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to register those included in the Royal Pardon among the beneficiaries of unemployment benefits for job seekers, the Minister of uh, the Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, held a meeting with the Minister of Labour, Jamil Ahmedan, in the presence of the CEO of the Information and E-Government Authority, the Director General of uh, the General Directorate of Crime Detection and Forensic Evidence, and the Director General of the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing. The Minister of Interior praised the directives of His Royal Highness, uh, which uh, come within uh, the framework of the continuous support provided by the government to implement uh, projects, initiatives, and rehabilitation programs aimed at integrating beneficiaries into society and in a way that contributes to developing the spirit of belonging and enhancing community security during the meeting. The executive steps and mechanisms that ensure speed and accuracy of implementation and overcoming any obstacles in this regard were reviewed, and it uh, was also agreed that the Minister of Labor would issue an announcement regulating the required executive procedures. The Minister of Municipalities Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wal Mbarak, affirmed that in implementation of uh, the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the Ministry will work in coordination and cooperation with municipal councils to address the effects of heavy rain witnessed by the Kingdom and tackle water logging. The Minister pointed out that all government agencies received continuous support and follow-up with from His Royal Highness, which uh, contributed to dealing effectively with the unprecedented wave of rains that the Kingdom witnessed. He emphasized the continuation of work and coordination with all concerned parties to deal immediately with any accumulation of rainwater in Bahrain. The minister praised the efforts and efficiency of the emergency team, which had a great impact in managing traffic, opening streets and uh, siphoning rainwater pools in most areas of uh, the kingdom, pointing out that work is still ongoing in various locations in different governance to ensure that life returns to normal. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, has stated that the Ministry's Damage Assessment Committee will initiate coordination with the Capital Municipality and Municipal Councils to monitor the damage to homes as a result of the heavy rain the Kingdom witnessed. In accordance with the directors of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to limit the damage resulting from rainwater collection and compensation for those affected. He added that the Ministry will create development programs for sites uh, with their rainwater accumulation to work on pr improving the infrastructure in a way that limits its exposure to damage again. Al Hawaj has stressed that the ministry is always keen to develop the infrastructure in proportion to the urban expansion witnessed by the kingdom and to provide everything that will bring good and uh, development to the nation. On the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the founding of the NATO, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs and Deputy Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated in the Conference of the Italian Society of International Organization in Rome, held under the patronage of the Italian President Sergio Mattarella, in the presence of a number of foreign and defense ministers of the NATO member states. Sheikh Dr. Abdullah delivered a speech in which he affirmed the Kingdom's keenness under the leadership of His Majesty Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to strengthen partnership with NATO and consolidate regional and international security through its membership to the Istanbul Cooperation Initiative, highlighting the continuation of coordination and political consultations between the two sides to confront all threats. He also stressed that the security of the Gulf region is an integral part of global security and that the increasing challenges in today's uh, world require sustainable cooperation and constructive strategic partnerships. The Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs and Deputy Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, participated in the Conference of the Italian Society of the International Organization in Rome on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of the uh, founding of the NATO Alliance. In his speech, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed the keenness of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King to strengthen the partnership with NATO to consolidate the pillars of regional and international security. He pointed to the continuation of coordination and political consultation between the two sides to confront threats related to combating terrorism, preventing the spread of weapons of mass destruction, and ensuring cyber security and energy security. He stressed that the security of the Gulf region is an integral part of uh, the global security and that the increasing and interconnected challenges in the world require sustainable cooperation and constructive strategic partnerships. He called on finding effective mechanisms to enhance collective security and working to resolve all conflicts by peaceful means in accordance with the rules of international law.